We all have our own idea of our dream home. But the reality is many of us have to put up with houses that just don't work. The kids are living on top of each other. There isn't enough space to do all the things they'd like to do. By the time you've opened this cupboard and this drawer, you can't move and nobody can come in. But it is possible to get more house for less money. Transforming a house into something spectacular might seem unaffordable, but I really believe it is possible to create your dream home for a fraction of the price of going and buying one, if you get it right. Oh, wow, that looks really smart. Last year saw a whopping 164,000 home extensions successfully granted planning permission. But get it wrong and a badly designed extension can knock thousands off the value of a house. It's slightly nerve-wracking because this is our house which could crumble at any moment. We might be creating a monster. In this series, I'll be following the fortunes of those attempting to radically overhaul smaller homes for a fraction of the cost of buying a bigger one. The headboard of the bed is going to be this far away from someone <laughs> else on the loo. Too close to comfort. It's never a simple undertaking. That's a mission you set yourself. It is a mission, yeah. yeah. To me, with my bad GCSE maths, yeah. it's four metres. This yeah. is going to be a bumpy <laughs> ride, isn't it? If I have to brush my teeth in a little small bucket, it's been held. But the rewards can be immense. Goodness me, how utterly fabulous. Don't really need the rest of the house. It's got everything we need just in this one spot. desperate for a bigger and better space, it is possible to get it without breaking the bank. Even the most modest property can be transformed into the perfect home. This week I'm with two homeowners in two beautiful locations who hope to save cash by doubling the size of their homes for a fraction of what it would cost to buy a ready-made big dream house. In the gorgeous seaside town of Whitstable, Kent, Paul and Laura plan to dramatically transform their 1930s terrace. For six months or so now, we've been cooking on our camp stove. But first, I'm off to Arden's Grafton, in the lovely Warwickshire countryside, where Richard and Sarah want to make the living space in their picture-perfect cottage twice the size. The older part is 1890 stone-built cottage, and then it's been extended over time. We do still love the house, it's just not really big enough for us. Richard and Sarah both work in sales and bought their cottage for £288,000 just four months ago. <laughs> I don't think we're going anywhere. <laughs> but things aren't as cosy as they might appear. It's quite a cold house, it's stone. A lot of the rooms have got damp. So at the moment, when you wake up in the morning, you don't want to get out of bed. We're going into uh, what was a dining room. We now call it the wet room because it stinks and it's got loads of wet in it. You can see the black lines all running from here and that's mould. Their chocolate box cottage may be damp and cold, but there is one thing that is absolutely perfect. The location really is what drew us to this property. It's close to where we've both grown up and parents live and everything. You can change a house, but you can't change the location. Richard and Sarah own a beautiful property, but it just doesn't have the space that they need. So they're going to show me another house in the village which would tick all their boxes. How are you? Okay. Good to meet you. Hello. Hi. What a lovely sleepy place to live. Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. gorgeous. Yeah, it is lovely. This house has the internal space they would dearly love. Do you drive past houses like this that are for sale and think, oh, yeah. yeah. Be the so, what are the conversations <laughs> you have? We can't afford it. <laughs> In what way would this house suit where your house at the moment doesn't? Size wise, really, it's, it's just the main thing. So, having an extra bathroom, more space, proper kitchen. So, a big, yeah. chunky kitchen. Yeah, it's... like a proper country kitchen. Sadly, their funds don't stretch as far as their desires to buy a spacious home like this. So, your house is worth about 
£300,000 and a house like this would be worth about £450,000. So you're £150,000 short. Yeah. yeah. Really. Which is quite not a lot doable. of money. <laughs> Which you don't have. No, no, we don't. But they do have savings of £60,000 and with that they plan to transform their own house for far less than the cost of moving. I think yeah. we've got to make something out of what we've got into something we need because physically we can't do it any other way. Richard and Sarah's cottage, like many rural properties, has been extended bit by bit over time. The result is a hodgepodge of buildings from the original Victorian house, ending up with this side extension bolted on in the 1950s. From this side, it looks as if there's no access through to the back of the house from the front without going through the house. That's not ideal. Inside, there are more problems with rooms that are dark and pokey. Downstairs, there's a living room, separate kitchen, and in the 50s side extension, a dining room. Upstairs, there are two good-sized bedrooms and a family bathroom. So this kitchen is not great for you at the moment. No, it's totally no. impractical, yeah. completely. What do you hate about it? It's cold. <laughs> it is cold. <laughs> and also having a front door into the kitchen just doesn't work for us at all. It's just a nightmare. Shoes everywhere, coats, nowhere to put them, so... So impractical in terms of keeping it clean, keeping yeah. it warm. Next door, the dining room is even worse. God, it's freezing in here. It is absolutely freezing here. One look at the damp stained walls and it's obvious where the problem lies. Your garden is halfway up the wall, and because of that, the damp from the earth will be seeping into it, because I very much doubt it's got any kind of barrier. But this room isn't just cold and damp. It stinks as well. So it's damp, cold, wet yep. and smelly. Yes. Perfect for dining room. <laughs> <laughs> Richard and Sarah want to build a two-storey rear and side extension, which they reckon will take four months. Downstairs, they want to create a kitchen dining space with the utility room to the side. They're planning to demolish the cold and damp dining room and build a carport. Upstairs, they'll create a third bedroom with an ensuite. But I wonder if their carport idea might be a complete waste of space. I really question your carport. You don't have that much space, and to take up an enormous part of it with an undercover carport that you can drive into so you can unload your shopping in the drive. The, the shopping will have got wet from the supermarket into the car. It's a very big space, this, taking up pretty much a third of your house. I feel they're really missing a trick here. If they install garage doors and insulate the floor, it could become a usable extra room. The cars can park on the drive. If you constructed it at this point as a dry, heated, insulated room, it would pay you dividends in the long run. No, I think that's a good idea. I think it's something to definitely consider and have a look at. Their budget is only £60,000, but they've started well by doing an amazing deal with the builders. They've actually capped your budgets. Anything over that, then it's their fault. They end up spending for it. So. Amazing! Yeah. So hang on, so they've capped us, so they said, we won't spend any more than this, and if it's more than that, then. we'll pay for yes. it. I'm impressed their builders are fixing their fee, but in my experience with a build like this, it sounds too good to be true. And I think that's a very, very good idea to rethink the carport and to create that extra space. It's a bit of a wasted space, really. If you're going to go to the effort of building it and building the room above it, then it'd be silly not to use it a little bit more. Rich and Sarah have got plans for a wonderful dream house, but there is a danger they could spend all their savings and end up with a house that's not that different to the one they've got, except it'll have a carport. While Richard and Sarah are freezing in their country cottage, I'm off to meet another couple in a beautiful location. Forced out of London because of house prices, web designer Paul and yoga teacher Laura moved to lovely Whitstable. They bought this three-bed 1930s end of terrace six months ago for £160,000, with plans to extend it. It started out as a bit of a nightmare. We moved into the house with the expectation that it's a bit rough-looking, it's quite old-fashioned, but, you know, we can make do. And then our architect said, 
you honestly can't use the boiler and we had to cut the gas off to the boiler. With their boiler condemned, Paul and Laura have been forced to rough it while they save cash for the build. So this is the uh, current kitchen, um, which has the uh, only place to heat water in the house. So we kind of wash up here. I wash here sometimes when I can't get to the local swimming pool. For six months or so now, we've been cooking on our camp stove. That actually is one of the main sources of heat for the property. <laughs> Now they want to build an extension that will give them twice the space and they want to be green. We want our house to have the smallest possible impact on the environment. There's a little bit of finger crossing going on that the end result's going to kind of come out as planned. So like many buyers, Paul and Laura feel that they've been priced out of the London market and have decided to look further afield to get on the property ladder. I'd say they've fallen on their feet. Hi, hello, hello, how are you? Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Wow, what an amazing place to live. <laughs> it's just that thing of being within arm's reach of the beach really kind of appeals to both of us. Paul and Laura are showing me a beachfront house with the space and style they want, but with a hefty price tag they could do without. In a perfect world, this would be your dream house, wouldn't it? What is it about this house that you really love? It's the open plan living. When you walk in, it's the sense of space and light. We love the fact it's made of wood. You know, not too polished. So you want something a little bit rough around the edges? Yeah. Right. Both don't tell you. our architect that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you for loving this house because it's absolutely idyllic. But it is worth probably about £700,000 and your house is worth £160,000, is not it? Yeah. Yes. So you'd need to find another £540,000. How much money do you have? We have a budget of about £60,000. So you're trying to create something that is in some ways as fabulous as this house for a fraction of the price of buying it. Exactly. We're going to try and create our dream house that has a kind of eco edge to its design on a shoestring, really. It sounds very ambitious. Time to check out their house. This is a lovely but very ordinary little house and they seem to have very big plans for it. I've seen so many people trying to do things that are environmentally friendly, however, they have a shoestring budget and they're a difficult thing to marry together. On the plus side, their 1930s end of tourists is a diamond in the rough, an unrenovated period property. Upstairs are three bedrooms. Downstairs, there's a living room, dining room and kitchen. Off that are tiny rooms, including a loo, utility and that unusable bathroom. This is the back section of the house and it's quite a poor configuration of space really, isn't it? Yeah, we've got the uh, tight kitchen to the side here of this room and then we've got the toilet over there and the bathroom over there. So it's all a bit uh, spread out and a bit of a mess really. But you're hoping by extending right out into the garden to give yourself more flexibility, is that right? Definitely, yeah, just extending out back and having more of an open plan space that will suit our lifestyle really. Paul and Laura's plans for a green extension on a £60,000 budget are tight. Upstairs, their idea is to replace the third bedroom with a bathroom. Downstairs, the dining room will get smaller to make a wet room and also donate space for a massive hallway. The new single-storey extension at the back will have a multi-purpose kitchen, diner, yoga space. Replacing their third bedroom upstairs with a bathroom is definitely the right thing to do. But personally, I think they're mad not to create a new bedroom downstairs, right here in the dining room. Effectively, what you're going to do is slash a third bedroom so you can have a nice wide corridor. It is quite luxurious for a house this size. Just having a big space, it's, as you say, is a luxury, but I think it kind of suits our kind of lifestyle, and that's more important to us, really. Paul and Laura are choosing lifestyle over value, which is fine until they want to move house. To have a third bedroom here would tickle up more boxes when you come to sell the house. The ideas that Sarah's come up with, we do need to 
bear some of these uh, points in mind. But nevertheless, I think we came here for a reason and that was to live our good life. And, um, you know, we feel the design that we've got right now will, will offer that. Paul and Laura have got big ideas, but a small budget. The trouble is, when push comes to shove, when the budget can't get bigger, the ideas and principles have to get smaller. I'm with two homeowners in beautiful locations who are aiming to dramatically extend their living space without breaking the bank. In the Warwickshire countryside, Richard and Sarah plan to supersize their idyllic cottage for £60,000 with a new rear and side extension. God, it's freezing in here. It is. It stinks as well. First job, demolishing that dilapidated old dining room extension with a view to turning it into a carport. It's not the ideal weather conditions to be doing a roof just because it's so windy. To save cash, they're doing the demolition themselves with assorted relatives. We've never used that room at all, so it's really nice to see it going, because as soon as it's gone, we can crack on with getting the build started. Woohoo! Down in the seaside town of Whitstable, Paul and Laura are also spending £60,000 on an eight-week build, which is now underway. There just seems to be that instant relief when you see people working on your house and you've, it's been building up for a while, having lived with no shower, no heating. It's really positive. Upstairs, they're planning to replace the third bedroom with a bathroom. Downstairs, instead of turning the dining room into a bedroom, they've decided on a wet room and massive hallway instead. The new single-storey extension will have a huge kitchen diner with yoga space for Laura. But just three days in, the first element of the plans to be sacrificed are some of their eco-ideas. The original extension was going to be a wooden space frame with a layered insulation, so it would have been really thermally efficient, but we had to move to a traditional blockwork design because um, not that many people have built in that way, so it would take a bit longer to build and the labour costs would have been a bit higher, so it, to bring our project in on our budget we've had to slightly change things a bit. So for the extension shell, it's bye-bye timber and hollow concrete breeze blocks. You kind of take one step in an eco-friendly way, but to fulfil that you take a back step in another way, so it is it is a bit of a challenge. Extending isn't always an option, but there are other ways you can get more space that don't even require planning permission. If building in bricks and mortar just isn't possible, but you're still desperate for more space even when it's raining, there are some other options, and one of them is to have a patio roof like this. They cost as little as £3,000, and you can have additional sides which come down electronically and keep out the wind and rain. Or you can go for a really top-end version of the same thing over here. Now this is a fully glazed version and the advantage with it being fully glazed is that if you have a window behind, it doesn't knock out any of the light from going into the house. It costs £7,000 for just the structure and goes up in two to three days. But you can add these sliding doors, which means on a rainy, cold day, you can be nice and toasty. I'm heading back to rural Warwickshire to see if Richard and Sarah are still set on having a carport now that the dilapidated extension is demolished. Oh, you've made quite a mess here, haven't you? I know. It's a better mess than it <laughs> was before, bit. though. Instead of an open-sided carport, I'm sure they should turn it into an extra room. Now you've got a great big hole and you've demolished this building. What have you decided to do with the garage? Because you were going to have a carport. We like the idea that we came, you came up with last yeah. time. And I think we're going to stick with that plan throughout, but budget-wise to us, it stretches a bit too far. So for now, they're shelving plans to make it an extra room. But if they want it, it's cheaper to do it now. The cost will be double to get someone back later on. You need to have a properly lined, insulated room. Whilst everyone's here, it's likely to cost probably four grand at the moment. It'll be eight 
later on down the line. Right. Yeah. yeah. It is hard to picture something here. Mm. And you look at the drawings and it's really hard to tell. Like many people, Richard and Sarah find it hard to imagine what their finished build will actually look like. So I've brought along an augmented reality app to help them picture their plans. And the reason I'm showing you this is that sometimes when you see it and visualise it, yeah. it's easier to make a decision. This is their current plan for a carport, which I'm worried might be a bit of a waste of space and money. I'm sure it would be much better to turn the carport into a secure, usable space that's part of the house, which will also add value to their cottage. And this is how it would look. Oh, wow, that's actually really that cool. That is really cool. So here, you'd have an area at the front which would store bicycles and tools. That is very clever. Yeah. And then you'd have a little walkway through. Yeah. And then you could also have an office with a window that looks out in this direction and out into the gardens. So instead of using all of this space just because you want to access to the garden, yeah. just have a little access and then you get an office as well. My only concern would be how big this room is. I think you'll find it's plenty big enough to be yeah. a good-sized office or a playroom. I hope this inspires them to look at their £60,000 budget again to see where they can claw back some cash. It's good though. Yeah. It's very clever to see something real. Yeah. Well. You can actually visualise the space. Down in Whitstable, Paul and Laura have had to sacrifice some of their eco principles, but I want to show Paul another kind of green insulation. In fact, it couldn't get any greener. Now, the reason I brought you here is because I know you've been a bit disappointed with quite how much you've had to compromise mm. in terms of making your build sustainable and environmentally friendly. <laughs> So I'd like you to look at this living wall, which is obviously on a massive scale. Yeah. The plants in a living wall are great for insulation, reducing heat loss and helping to lower your heating bills. They also help keep rooms cool in the summer. There are 12,000 plants on this wall and 250 different species. Oh, OK. It's actually planted into recycled cloth okay. rather than soil so it's easier in terms of keeping it clean, which is something on a smaller scale you could do with your house. Apart from being good for the environment and reducing the carbon footprint a little bit, I think it also has a wow factor, you know? I mean, that's why it's been put on the front of this hotel. It doesn't have to cost a fortune, it looks fabulous, and it's a tick for the environment. So actually, everyone's a winner. You can order living walls by the metre. 15 square metres averages 1,000 plants and costs around £10,000. As well as insulation, the plants work as an air filter and also as handy soundproofing if you have noisy neighbours. In Warwickshire, builder Richard is working on the retaining walls at the back of the cottage. These are crucial as they'll stop the surrounding banks of earth in the sloping back garden collapsing onto the house. As you can see above our head here, some of which has already fell away. It's holding back all that from uh, coming into this property. But Richard's hit a problem, unstable sandy soil. When we were digging out to get the walls in and put the footings in, we didn't know it was all sand underneath. So as we were digging away, the sand was crumbling in and the soil was following it. But yeah, we've dug back further, got the walls up now, everything's retained, yeah, everything's pretty solid now. The walls may be secure, but the budget has taken a hit. Building retaining walls was not included in the fixed price deal with the builders, so Richard and Sarah will have to shell out around £10,000 on top of their budget. We quote for the work, obviously though that was for the property itself, this is all external work which certainly wasn't in the quote and you know it's had to be added on which is a difficult sort of pill to swallow but that's just the way it is really. Richard and Sarah are learning the hard way that there's no such thing as a problem-free budget. It's now two weeks into Paul and Laura's eco-friendly £60,000 build on the Kent coastline. Time to see how they're getting on. The reality of their budget has meant that Paul and Laura have had to make some big compromises. I'm just hoping this hasn't taken the sheen off their excitement. Hi, hello, Hi. how are you? Very Good to well. see you. 
you've ended up without timber and the latest insulation and actually just with straightforward concrete blocks and, and standard glass fibre insulation. You know, we're zoning all the heating so that it can be as efficient as possible. We're using the latest window technology and all of that sort of stuff. So we're still keeping it very eco-friendly. Just a compromise, I guess, with what we can afford. The Kitchen Diner extension will be a huge open plan living space. But back inside their original 1930s house, they've changed their plans for the layout. So this is all ripped to pieces in here, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. We've, uh, we've knocked it about quite a bit, that's for sure. Yeah. Now they're putting a shower room with Lou on one side of the hallway and a utility and pantry on the other. Given the size of their kitchen in the extension, this room could surely be given a better use. It seems a bit of a waste to have this amount of space as a utility room and pantry when Actually, it would be a really good third bedroom. This space out the back here, the main extension, is yoga sort of studio space as well. And, um, you know, we don't want stuff cluttering that up, so we can put washing and stuff in this utility. It's just literally going to be um, a space where we can store things. That's a big priority for us. I think Paul and Laura might not have noticed a golden opportunity with this particular house. You can stick a window in here because you've got this gem of having the end wall, this flank wall, means you can put windows on all of this end wall because it's your access way up the side. Yeah. And that's very unusual because if it was a terrace, you wouldn't have that opportunity. I question not having a third bedroom because as and when and if you come to sell this, three bedrooms is going to make it more valuable than two bedrooms. And that's just the way it is. But I don't feel I'm convincing them. Paul and Nora are struggling to make their green ideas fit their budget. And with money being so tight, it seems bizarre to me that they're, they're not taking the opportunity to add value to their home. In colourful Whitstable, Paul and Laura are having to make cuts in their green plans to keep their build on budget. While in rustic Warwickshire, Richard and Sarah are also facing cash problems with their country cottage. Their rear extension is going up fast. It'll add a massive new kitchen as well as a master bedroom suite with gorgeous views across the surrounding countryside. But building reinforced retaining walls to protect their extension is costing an extra £10,000. So at the moment, you are a little bit over budget, aren't you? Because you've had this problem with the retaining walls. Yeah, that yeah. that's right, yeah. So is that worrying, being a bit over...? That's just taken quite a big chunk out, which we didn't expect mm. at all. So obviously we need to knock it off somewhere else. I think it's going to come down to, instead of builders finishing, they were going to whitewash around the doors and etc. and skirting boards and stuff. I think we'll knock that off and we'll do that ourselves. My dad He's... might fit the bathroom, you and him and stuff. Yeah. Your brother perhaps do the kitchen. That's the spirit. Richard and Sarah are also recycling roof tiles from the old extension they demolished. It's probably around about £1,800 saving. Yeah. Which I know is a bit of a drop in the ocean compared to what we've been spending on things such as retaining walls and stuff, but at least it's something. It all helps. It really does. Recycling materials on a build is always a great idea. If you're doing work to an old property, before anything goes in the skip, think about whether you can store it and keep it. Because all of this lot you could either reuse or when you're over budget like they are, you can sell it. You can sell a huge range of reclaimed building materials at salvage yards and on the internet. Roof tiles can retail for more than five pounds each. A chimney, more than 50, and bricks a couple of pounds each. Old doors are also much sought after, but don't stop there. Hinges, handles, locks, and even the nails, it all adds up. In Whitstable, Paul and Laura are now a month into their two-month build. Keep going up. They're at the stage of their build where they need to finalise their lighting plan. 
Leaving it to the last minute is a common but expensive mistake. I'd like to show them that green and luxury are no longer strange bedfellows. Now, this is actually an eco home, and there's lots of features here that I'd like you to see. Like Paul and Laura's new extension, this stunning home has huge multifunctional spaces. What you're trying to do with your new extension is make it do a lot of different jobs. So it's got to be a yoga studio and it's got to be a kitchen and it's got to be a dining area and a sitting area and an office as well. The most important way to make it fulfil all those functions is having controllable, effective lighting. The best way to see that, first of all, is to have it dark. You can get started from as little as £150 for an automated lighting system controlled from a tablet or phone. It makes drawing the curtains look like a thing of yesterday, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the controllability of the system in the house is great. I mean, Laura's yoga or for when we've got friends over for dinner. And of course, in terms of the environment, we're talking about LED lights. LEDs or light-emitting diodes can be pricey, but can last up to 100 times longer than other bulbs and are around 80% more energy efficient. I think the most effective lights are ones where you can see the source of the light, you just see the effect of the light. It's quite theatrical. It is quite theatrical, I agree. And you can add further drama with texture on the walls. In your new space, the whole of the right wall is going to be a massive, big, blank wall. So you could think about breaking that up with clever lighting and shadow relief like this. And again, it's all controllable from a tablet. Amazing effect, I think. What do you think? It's great. I mean, I've never seen that effect before on, on a wall with trees and this sort of relief, and it shows what you could actually achieve. Paul and Laura aren't alone at leaving the lighting to be a bit of an afterthought, but it's one of the most essential elements to making a big space like they're going to have work well. And now is the time they really need to nail it. In Warwickshire, halfway into their four-month build, it's crunch time. A 400 kilo steel beam must be fitted, which will support the roof on Sarah and Richard's new extension. But both the weather and the tricky access are causing problems for their builder, Richard. We just cannot get the crane in. The crane will be too small to lift the distance we need to get it in, and we're only lifting it into a small pocket. So obviously having a big steel blown around in the wind uh, and aiming for a 200 square hole, um, it's just it's not going to happen. Without a crane, they have to wrestle the huge beam in by hand. One, two, three. Okay, down it Good enough. Steel's in. A little bit of manoeuvring to do for the builders tomorrow, but nothing major. Uh, so all in all, very, very good job. Job done. Well done. For more information about extending your house or increasing your floor space, check out my scrapbook at channel4.com forward slash beanie. In Whitstable, it's taken two months for web designer Paul and yoga teacher Laura to extend their home. But now, all their hard work is almost finished. Paul and Laura took on a massive challenge trying to do an eco-build on a shoestring. They also had some really quite unusual ideas for their layout, which, whilst they might work now, I fear they might live to regret. But it was quite an undertaking, and I'm dying to see how it's all turned out. Paul and Laura's 1930s terrace had been unloved for decades. But now they've turned it into a smart, contemporary home that's tailored to their lifestyle. Hi, hello. Welcome How are you? Back. Welcome Very back, nice Sarah. to see you. Hello. Goodness, look at this, all finished. Fantastic. Fantastic. So you've got this lovely big hallway, but I guess the compromise was to sacrifice the third bedroom so you could get this big hallway. We have lost the bedroom, like you said, but we've got the things we really wanted, so we'll work around the bedroom thing. And what they really wanted was to replace this old kitchen with this massive new kitchen dining yoga room by extending into the garden. 
And what an amazing success. Works so well, so lovely. And having all of that light up there just completely transforms the space. We're really happy with the, you know, all the light that's pouring in through the glass ceiling now and, and, and the doors at the end of the room. It feels instantly like home, which is what we wanted. Um, and our main priority was light. But to get all this for their £60,000 budget meant making some tough choices. Do you think, perhaps, in reality, you were a bit unrealistic about what you could achieve on the budget you had? You had great big plans for having this terribly green build. Fully wooden structure and all that sort of thing as well, but it ended up just coming in too expensive. The breeze block structure rather than the wooden structure and UPVC windows instead of wooden windows, those are things that, I guess, had to give. Yeah. yeah, but I think, you know, we've managed to uh, fit in the recycled deck made of rice husk. We've got underfloor heating throughout, um, and this is all made from recycled materials as well. So that, we're quite happy with the sort of eco side of things. At the front of the house, what was a tired old living room has been revamped with a gorgeous retro feel topped off with some very clever remote-controlled lighting. We took some inspiration from the house that you took us to visit. With you know, it was really cool. We liked all the different ways you could change the mood and the feel of the spaces. So we found these light bulbs on the high street, which were quite budget friendly. It's genius. Look at all the fun you can have with it. Make them lighter or brighter, or completely change the colour. Upstairs, what was their third bedroom has been transformed into a luxury bathroom. It must be so lovely to have a bath here in the house rather than having to, to use the sink or go down to the swimming pool. Sure, I think I'm going to be in that bath for about the next six months. <laughs> Permanently, I won't be able to get you out of there. When you started this project, the house was worth about 160,000, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. And you had a 60,000 pound budget. Yeah. We're not wildly over in, in terms of build costs now. For Paul and Nora to buy their dream home in Whitstable would have cost a whopping £700,000. £540,000 more than their budget. Instead, they managed to create their own dream house for £60,000. That's a fraction of the cost. And the house's value has gone up by the amount they spent on it. If you did come to sell it, and I know you're not planning on selling it, um, it would be worth 220,000. So what you've spent on it, it would be worth. And so you wouldn't actually lose any money. It would be 220,000. That's great. Yeah. If you had managed to get a third bedroom in, you're probably looking at adding another 20,000 or so to that. Really? Would... OK. It is an unusual space. I mean, it might not be for everybody, but we think it's going to be a beautiful space to live in. You're planning on staying and enjoying it. And so that's fantastic. And it's the perfect layout for you guys, isn't it? Paul and Laura have had a really steep learning curve with this project and they've had to make a lot of compromises along the way, especially with their green aspirations. But they have ended up with a house that's perfectly tailored to suit their needs that they can enjoy into the future. Coming up, Richard and Sarah's extended cottage spectacularly brings the outside in. Gosh, look at this! This was the garden! In the beautiful countryside of Warwickshire, Richard and Sarah's Victorian cottage will soon be supersized with not one, but two extensions. And they've finally bitten the bullet and are upgrading the build on their garage so it can easily be turned into extra living space in the future. So what do you think you're going to use it for at the moment? For the first six months, I think it's going to be used as a normal garage with every housing, all your sort of blunt mowers and etc. Going forward from there, it will be converted into an office. It would be a valuable space, I think. So everything will be done insulated um, and garage doors on the front. Making the right choice is a really key decision. OK, yeah. Okay, so come on in and let me show you some things. There are ranges of doors for people who want to use the option of using their garage as a living space. So I've brought Richard to a showroom to see what's on offer. 
Now, this is a solid oak garage door, and it comes in at about £10,000, although if you had it in laminate, it would only be £3,500. But it's the mechanism that's so clever about it because it opens like this. As it slides, it slides behind this false wall. You can use the space inside as an office or a playroom and it doesn't feel like a garage it's inside. really clever, I really like that. And it's a gadget as well, so it's good. Well, anything for a gadget, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Next up is the cheapest of the three options. Now, this one comes in four sections. So this, this was one section, two, three, four. And it's in laminate. <clears throat> so for £2,000, you can have that. And it's also insulated as well? And it's fully insulated, yes, yeah, so you can use inside. And that's something that is really worth thinking about with your garage doors. Yeah, definitely, if you yeah. insulate them, the room inside is going to be a lot more practical. This third option has not one, but two doors. Now, this has a full store in the middle, which is great if you don't want to always open the whole garage door. The convenience of just opening the door, because if you're just getting a mower out or something out, you don't need to lift the whole thing up all the time. This garage door would be about £4,000. Is it something that you would be prepared to spend as extra at the moment? I know you're up against it in terms of the budget, aren't you? The thing that crosses my mind the most, I think, is on the second one with the insulation and the up and over. I think that's probably the one I'd lean towards the most. Sensibly, it looks like Richard might be tempted by the cheapest option at £2,000. For more information about extending your house or increasing your floor space, check out my scrapbook at channel4.com forward slash beanie. It's been four months since Richard and Sarah started building work on their cottage. But finally, it's about to be finished. Richard and Sarah bought a fairy tale cottage. They were desperate for more space and to be rid of their damp and dark dining room. And then they made the unusual decision of deciding to turn the dining room into a carport. They've had budget problems along the way, but I'm desperate to see how it's all turned out. Before, their Victorian cottage was gorgeous but cramped and uninhabitable in places. Now, it's still gorgeous but twice as big and a comfortable family home. Hello, how are you? Good to Good. see you. <laughs> Hello. How are you doing? This is absolutely fantastic. When I first came here, it was lovely and charming, but tiny, this little cottage. And now, with all of this, completely transformed. It's, it's a really big house now. You keep looking and thinking, is it ours? At the back of the cottage, they've created a smart new double height extension with a gorgeous landscape garden safely held back by those expensive retaining walls. Gosh, look at this. This was the garden, wasn't it? It was the yeah, garden, it was. yeah. <laughs> Amazing. You say that's bizarre, isn't it? Before, their small, cold kitchen was in the old part of the cottage. But the rear extension now houses a sleek new country kitchen. You always said that you dreamt of having a chunky kitchen. Is this what you meant by that? Yeah, it's exactly what I wanted, this kitchen. It's beautiful. Touch of modern, but still keeping some of the character. And thanks to underfloor heating and installing an air source heat pump, their freezing damp country cottage is now warm and snug. I do remember the first day I came here, it was really freezing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's just a different house, completely yeah. different house. I can't believe it's ours. They ditched their plan to replace the damp old side extension with an open-sided carport and instead created a room they can use as living space in the future. Now it's got doors on, which is exciting. <laughs> and what's inside? I'm dying to see. It's not finished yet because of the budget overspend, but this space will eventually become Richard and Sarah's office. Yeah, yeah we've some... got all the foundations done and all the insulations. The cost of insulating it whilst you were building it was negligible. Yeah. Mm. But now you can convert it into a usable space really easily and really cheaply. Upstairs, Extending has given them a new master bedroom with a luxury ensuite. So you're very luxurious boudoir. Yes. <laughs> it's lovely. Amazing. 
<laughs> the plan is to perhaps, you know, extend the family. It's a house that we're going to grow into, isn't it? So it's yeah. a house we're going to grow up in with bringing up a family as well. So, yeah, definitely. Mm. Hence the big bed, so... <laughs> Make the babies and then put the babies in it. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about your house now it's all finished? Love it. It's brilliant. What was your lowest point? The groundwork, the costs, really sort of hit home, I think, mm. to us. Yeah. But in the end, how much of a hammering did the budget take? The house when you started was worth about £300,000 and you, were, you had a budget of about £60,000. Yeah. yeah. Which you did go a bit over on, didn't you? Yes, yeah. around about twenty over budget. OK, which, considering the walls were... Half of that, probably. Yeah. Easily, yeah. I mean, you've done an awful lot, to be yeah. honest, for yeah. £80,000. I think you should be very proud of yourselves for that. If Richard and Sarah had decided to move house, their dream home in this area would have cost £450,000, so they'd have needed to find £150,000. Instead, they managed to create their own dream house for £80,000. Even though they overspent by £20,000, that's around half the money. And I've got more reassuring news. Now, once that garage has been finished and it's more of a usable room, I think it would be really realistic that you'd get 450,000 for this house. So you probably have created a good 70,000 pounds of equity in the house. That's pretty that's amazing. Pretty good, yeah. yeah. Mm. We couldn't have had a house like this before, could we? No we way, just yeah. could not afford, you couldn't it. afford it. So doing it this way has been much better. Is this now the house of your dreams? It's Perfect, it's isn't exactly it? Exactly how we wanted it. Exactly. This old cottage has seen more than centuries past and countless seasons change. It's now undergone the biggest reinvention in its history. Richard and Sarah have now created a beautiful home here in rural England. Next time, Neil and Anita are at loggerheads over a man cave. I would like my gym back, yeah. <laughs> You're thinking, hands <laughs> off your gym. I did get sleeted a bit by, by my wife and Sarah. <laughs> this is going to be a bumpy ride, isn't it? <laughs> and Jackie is worried their house could fall down. If anything goes wrong, then our floor to ceiling tiles could just crack. What? All right, all right. 